Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am extra, extra excited for today's video because I have my friend Tiffany Langston back on with me and we will be doing a preview because I don't like making predictions because I always get them wrong for the 2019 World Figure Skating Championships held in Saitama, Japan. Tiffany, how are you doing? Hello from under my bed in New York City and I am so excited <laughs> to be here. Yay! I'm so thankful you could help me out because I couldn't do this on my own and I know you follow skating because you love the drama you love all the action so it's just gonna be fun and what else I wanted to preface with something else oh, I'll just say it when it comes do you mind if we started off by talking about ice dance sure okay so let's just get at this out of the way I you know think that Gabriella Papadakis and Guillaume Cizeron of France have a good shot at winning the gold medal. I I mean, they are they are so good. I do think that my dog is barking. Um I do think that um of any season recently, this is the season that I think there is an opportunity or a chance that someone might up in them based on solely the fact that they haven't gotten as much mileage out of their programs as they have in the past. They really, you know, the injury kept them out of their second Grand Prix or their first Grand Prix and then the Grand Prix final, which means that they don't have the momentum and they also don't have the the, the judges, you know, sort of scores build as the year goes on. Mm -hmm. um, they're still amazing and excellent and, and it's going to be tough to beat. But I think if there's any year where the tide starts to turn, I think it is probably this year. And before Four Continents, I would have told you that the, the team that has the best chance of doing that <laughs> is probably Hubble and Donahue, but they had uh, some str a struggle, <laughs> a couple of struggles um, in Four Continents <laughs> that kind of stalled the momentum that they were building. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that you say that. So you're right, it is possible, but that that's gonna be quite a, a leap in um, some personal best scores from the other dance teams. like. Uh, Guillaume and Cesarom, I think at European State scored a total of 217. And then Chalk and Bates, by surprise, won four continents with 207. So, you know, can they make up 10 points? You never know. Um, could Guillaume and Cesarom slip up once or twice? I mean, they're, they're definitely, I think, they would have to, all the other teams would have to be spot on perfect and get all of their levels. And the um, this rhythm dance this year has been a beast. Like nobody's been. getting their levels in the Tango Romantica. Like 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 the, we see top teams that are usually, you know, getting threes and fours getting twos. Um, and so if it happens, the teams are going to have to skate remarkably well the caller is going to have to be lenient on the levels yeah. and they're going to have to be perfect. Um, and I think, I think it's possible. I think, I think that the French are going to have to make a couple of mistakes and the other teams are going to have to skate spot on perfect. I think Chalk and Bates, they're going to have a tough time too, because they also have just debuted their programs internationally. So they don't have sort of, Actually, talking Bates and Weaver and Poge, I think are all all going to struggle with the same prop, the same issues uh, with mm -hmm. their programs just not having enough mileage and the judges not having seen them. I think the best chance for it to happen is Hubble and Donahue. The problem with that is that their greatest strength is their greatest weakness, and that they always skate all out, super powerfully and aggressive. And when you do that, the chances for small and larger mistakes to creep in are high. It's, it's a high risk, high reward style of skating. Um, but I think they have the best chance of beating the French, but it's going to take uh, close to a miracle. That's right. And overall, judging has been interesting. And more specifically than judging is technical calls have been really kind of strict and or weird. Like, I always like to watch Erin Conley on Twitter live tweet because she could see the levels and she's like, that's weird. That's odd. <laughs> like at the Grand Prix final, I was like, are all of these top teams really getting like level twos and threes on their like Tango Romantica dance pattern in the rhythm dance? <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, I hear the, from people in the know who are not me that mm -hmm. that it's just a re just a really tough it's a really tough dance to master, um, and those the the change of edges is really specific and precise, and when you miss just one, it like messes up the end the whole thing. So it, mm -hmm. it's hard. Yeah. Um, and 
the teams, even the best in the world right now, are struggling to get those level fours on on the step sequences for that. That's right. So besides the gold medal, I'd also say it's a battle to land on the podium as well. And there's so many, so many great dance teams. Like we saw so many uh, teams make it to the Grand Prix final who we did not expect to see there, which is ultimately amazing. But also I think so many people want to land on the podium that we're going to have a lot of broken hearts. But remember, it's the season after the Olympics. Anything can happen. But this is also the season to make a splash. Chalk and Bates are back with their fan favorite, Free Dance, which I personally really love. I'm not going to lie. I think everyone knows this by watching my videos. I'm not a fan of the Tango Romantica. I can appreciate that it's difficult to do. And, you know, I think it's fair because I had two seasons of rhythm dance uh, what do you call it, themes that I really enjoyed. There was hip hop and then Latin. So, you know, I'm all about everyone's free dance. And let's see, Hubble and Donahue, they have a great shot to place really high at Worlds. Their, their Romeo and Juliet free dance is not well loved by most skating fans. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, think the, I think that they do it well. I found that they have had more interesting. Um, music choices in the past. I've I, the only person who's doing uh, Romeo and Juliet this year that I am really into is Junwa Cha. Everybody else, same here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. So so yeah, but but they're doing they're doing it well and it suits their strengths. It's just not super interesting. I think almost every other top team has a better, more interesting um, free dance. But I mean, they're showing why they are. Currently, for the moment, the top American team and, and one of the people to, or one of the teams to be competing for the podium and maybe the gold. I mean, their skating skills are amazing. Their partnering is beautiful. So um, nice. Ever since they moved to to Montreal to work with Marie France and, and um, Patch, uh, you can tell a, a huge difference in their skating and they're more powerful. Um, this, yeah, this music, it's boring. <laughs> yeah. You know who I don't think is boring uh, is a Russian dance team, Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Bukin. So they, you know, by surprise, finished second at Europeans, I believe, over their teammates who were expected to do better. And I got to say, I think their Tango Romantica is interesting, mainly because it's different from a lot of other uh, Tango Romantica <laughs> rhythm dances we see. I like a little edgy and dark take on things. Um, of course, it also helped... Um, that their teammates at Europeans fell really horribly on their twizzles in the rhythm dance. But I think you talked about momentum earlier. Like, could the judges shift their perception of where they place internationally? I'm rooting for them. Well, it's interesting, too, because if you had asked me at the beginning of this year who was a top Russian team, I would have said Stepanova and Bunkin. But Sinitsa and Katsalapov had a really strong early season. Um, and it, it even at the Grand Prix final, it mm -hmm. kind of maybe that was changing a little bit. Also, can we talk about the fact that Russia only has two dance spots? How yeah, many? what happened last year? I am out I of the loop. I can't remember <laughs> what happened in World 2018. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was when when I when they recently the Russian Federation announced the full world team, and I was like, I had forgotten that they only had two dance teams because you know I would say that there are probably eight teams fighting for three spots on the podium. And I would put both of these Russian teams as having definitely a shot for silver and bronze. Uh, uh, yeah, unquestionably. Like, they, they are two super strong teams. And, I, you know, they're going to easily get, I think, two spots for next year. Or three spots for next year and everything's going to be fine. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of things tend to change. I'm wondering if they had a retirement in their top team after the Olympics because, and actually, fun fact, Tiffany, the last time you and I did a video was the world's preview <laughs> last year. <laughs> and I never did a recap because it was a long Olympic season. So <laughs> a top Russian ice dance team must have retired. But yeah, Victoria Sinitsina, I'm saying that wrong, and Nikita Kats Katsalapov. Okay, Nikita and Victoria, um, <laughs> they look so good. I'm just so shocked by that twizzle. I mean, we've seen twizzle fails often, but that was like the fail of the fail. Like, two falls, and then you can tell that affected the rest of their program. I actually, I rewatched their Europeans programs this morning, um, and it looked like they skated really well. They rebounded in the uh, free dance, but still was not good enough to land on the podium. They were third in the free dance, but fourth overall. But the interesting thing to note is that their program component marks were higher than um, 
what are their names? Alexandra and Ivans. So I don't know what's going to happen with the world. I should place a bet with someone because I think that'll be interesting. But I'll be watching those two Russian dance teams. I think both of the Russian teams skate clean. I believe Victoria and Nikita are going to come out on t- as top Russian team. If they, if they skate I can clean, see that. Don't, it's different. I, th- I feel like the, there's a changing of the guard here. Um, which is kind of a bummer because Stefanova and Bukin have just now been because oh who was the uh, it was Bobrova and Solovia they were the ones the top team from before who retired after mm-hmm. the Olympics and so this has really been the first time that Stefanova and Bukin have gotten to shine even though I think they were to me better skaters than Bobrova and Solovia um, just she, better posture um, better partnering um, better cohesion between the two um to me Barbara always skated a little sloppy she Mm -hmm. never felt like she was like on top of her skate she never really felt like she was really crisp in her movements and I so um but yeah it's it's seeming like there's a there might be a shake-up happening um a couple of other teams that I'm really looking forward Mm -hmm. to seeing are um Hurtado and Kalyavan which is interesting because Spain has had you know sort of two uh, dance teams, but they never can get to the point where they can have two world spots. Yeah, and it's going to be hard for them to top ten this year. So that might still be the case. And every year they duke it out with um, uh, Smart and Diaz. Yes, which Hurtado and Diaz used to skate together. And when they were starting to skate really well, then they're like, nope, we're not going to do this anymore. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so they're going to continue, I think, to butt heads for the the one spot um but Hurtado and Kaliaban have been the ones who've come out sort of on top as of late um so I'm interested to see them Fear and Gibson because I love their disco free dance it's wonderful um Team Coco from Japan um you can tell that um they're Japan is really putting in the effort to to really strengthen their pairs and dance teams because they're the men and the women are so great um so they're they're putting in a lot of, of of resources behind them so that's really nice to see um and then canada obviously we yeah. talked a little bit about weaver and Poge, but gillis and poirier have my probably one of my favorite free dances of the year um and hopefully they can skate two clean programs they're definitely in the mix for a medal as well as weaver and Poge. um the other canadian team um fournier baudry and Sorensen. i think this is their first year that they skated full internationally for canada i yeah. think at least for canada so, they're exciting. And then, obviously, uh, Hawaii and Baker. I'm really looking forward to the Yay. sort of next U.S. Um, dancers. Uh, they're really great. I love them. He's phenomenal. He's just... We, you know that you're supposed to really sort of watch the, the woman. She's the yeah. flower. Mm-hmm. But he's an amazing partner, an amazing um, ice dancer. And I just love... I love watching them. I, I love watching him. Um, so, yeah. Those are the, the people that I'm really excited to see. What about you? Yeah, that's everyone who we need to know about. I will just add in one more team. It's uh, Charlene Guinard and Marco yeah. Fabri from Italy. So I know a lot of people like to describe ice dance as, you know, what makes a dance team have good skating skills? And I think Aaron Conley said this, is that um, they make the dance look really easy because ice dance is really hard, actually. I like Charlene and Marco because they make ice dance look fun. I mean, this has been a dream season for them, winning a Grand Prix medals for the first time and at the Grand Prix final. And gosh, they just light up with joy whenever they skate. Um, It's going to be hard to place within the top five or six for them. You never know. I would I would put them as a they I think they're dark horses for the podium potentially. I mean winning a medal in the Grand Prix final is not easy and that that was a strong, strong group of folks there. So yeah, them, the Gillison Poirier, Weaver and Poge, Madison and Evan, Madison and Zach, um, obviously Pakadakis and Cicerone, and the two Russian teams. And I think all of those people have shots at making the podium. So it's gonna be I think this is probably gonna be the most hotly contested, evenly matched out of all of them, I think. Yeah, and it's a post-Olympic year. Like, when does this happen? I'm going to be glued to ice dance for the first time in my life. The scores are going to be so close. No one is going to want to hold a lift for too long because you get that deduction, which uh, I, I still don't all the way understand, but I could, I could see it when the protocols come up. And yeah, it's going to be tight. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with PCS. Lots of drama. Yay! We love drama. We love drama. Let's see. Next up, shall we talk about pairs? Okay. I think for the gold, to me, it's going to be between the Chinese and the French. Obviously, the French being 
uh, Vanessa James and Morgan Cipres, and then the Chinese being Wen Jing Sui and um, Khan Han. So, yes. I think, um, yes. Uh, I love James and Cipre. I have loved watching them kind of really come into their own over the last year or two. Mm -hmm. This seemed like a sort of straight shot to victory. As we saw at uh, Four Continents, you know, Sway and Han are just coming back um, from injury. She has has always had a lot of struggles with her ankles and her feet and has had surgeries. Um, you know, they did not have the strongest Four Continents and actually ended up winning by the slimmest, barest of margins. So small, yes. I mean, she struggles on her side-by-side -side jumps a lot. And that's actually one of the strengths of James and Cipre, though I think um, Sui and Han do... Um, are probably ahead on a lot of the pair elements, the lifts, um, the just the overall sort of packaging and performance. Um, I think their their programs are just very very special. Even having only seen them once, and even having seen them not perfect, uh -huh. um, I think that if both teams are perfect, perfect, Sway and Han are going to win pretty easily. Um, where James and Cipre do. Um, excel are in their sort of technical elements. They're very strong. They're very strong individually. They're very strong together. Their jumps are, I can't tell you the last time I've seen either one of them miss a side by side jump. And that's where all the other pairs tend to fall yeah. apart. So if they're clean and Sway misses her jumps, I think that James and Zipre are strong enough uh, across the board to, to take the goal. But I do agree that it's probably between the two of them with a slight. I won't say slight, like, I think the Russian team, um, Tarasova and Morozov, have a really good shot at, at winning, but they also have been struggling with consistency this year. Um, their, their pair, their lines, and just how they look together are probably better than any of the other teams. Um, it's just that they can't seem to put together two clean programs. So um, I would put, make it a two-team a two race with, a, with them being definitely having the uh, opportunity to, to come through and win. They are strong enough to win, but they haven't had a, a clean – I don't think they've had a singular clean program all year, I don't think. Yeah. Maybe or something. They've been struggling, so. Very nicely put. A quasi-three-way, you know, race to the gold. And, you know, those three pairs, they're not – too too far off in terms of program components so it may come down to a case of who is the cleanest who gets yeah. the highest tech score and it'll be interesting to see will will Wen Jing Sui land her side by side jumps because otherwise that free program is beautiful spectacular just the first 20 seconds where they're not even really doing anything I'm just like yeah yes but you gotta admit there is a reason why um Vanessa and uh, is it Vanessa James? Yeah, Vanessa and Morgan have been undefeated so far this season. I mean, like, wow. I saw them at Skate Canada, and ooh, I was fanning myself in the seat, even though I was giving them a standing ovation. <laughs> and, you know, Charlie White um, choreographed their long program, and oh. you can tell that somebody who is really strong with the idea of movement across the ice put that program together, and it really shows off their strengths. Um, it's, it's a beautiful program. It's really great for them. I love the music choices they've been making lately. They're a always a little bit out of the box and, and a little bit more yeah. interesting. I love. Um, so yeah, they're great. I would be perfectly happy with them winning. I, I think they've, they deserve. They've had the strongest season. They've, you know, put down more clean programs than not clean programs. Um, they're so strong. Um, and I would love that for them. I would love that because I think this year was the first time they'd had won uh, Europeans, which is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because like, they've been around for so long, but you're, but you know, uh, I, just, oh yeah, of course they've won. They've won multiple Europeans. No, <laughs> no, no. no, it's not actually true. A lot of medals, but not, you know, the gold. And then I think that also the judges really like them because sometimes Vanessa puts her foot down on the throws, but they still get enormous GOE marks. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. All right. You know, they was good and they deserve to win, but you know, you know, sometimes a little wobbled here and there. The judges seem to, you know not totally mark them down for it. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's move on to the next tier of pairs. My personal favorite of the bunch is also from China. By the way, Chinese only having two pair spots is a little yeah. out of this world for me. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Peng Cheng and Yang Jin. Everyone, or Jin Yang, everyone knows them as the the pair that skated to my favorite short program ever, which is my drag, choreographed by Lori Nickel. Loved it, loved it. This year, they have some interesting programs. Not bad interesting, good interesting. You know, Ophelia for short is 
not something expected from a Chinese team. But, you know, uh, I like that it's also something different for the free. They've proven themselves to be the clear second um, Chinese uh, pair internationally. And I love that for them. But struggle with consistency. It's almost like one fall per each competition I'm counting. So if they could just skate clean, you know, they could narrow the gap and fight for the podium. Yeah, I think I definitely think they have a shot for the podium. I think gold and silver are probably out of reach, but definitely there's like a you know five way uh, chase for the bronze. <laughs> they're definitely in it. If they land their jumps, they're they're a beautiful team. You like you said they have really interesting programs. They're sh- beautiful to watch. She is phenomenal, mm-hmm. um, but that she's got to land those jumps. Yeah, and then- I'm gonna say. I'm going to say that a lot for Paris. She's got to land her jumps. Your jumps. Yeah, got to land them. Uh, who else has to land her jumps but does a good job is Kirsten Moore Towers of Moore Canada. Yes. With Michael Marinero. Um, you know, they had a pretty not so amazing start to their season. Really wanted to qualify for the Grand Prix final in Vancouver. Really unfortunate. But, you know, Four Continents was a nice bounce back for them. They It was it was so interesting, too, to watch them because they were the last team to skate in. Um, and they were, got their scores and they were like, okay, great. Second place for conferences. And then they saw that they were second by the slimmest of margins. Like, so, mm-hmm. and then you could tell they were like, oh, we were so close to having a four continents championship. <laughs> um, but yeah, they are, you know, I know that a lot of people, when she and Dylan split up, kind of looked at her like, oh, I think you might be crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and but, you know, she was looking for an eight-year partnership because the the big reason that they broke up was because Dylan only wanted to do one more quad and she wanted to do two, which made sense. She was quite a bit younger than him. Um, and so, you know, although, and I loved Dylan and Luab. They were also beautiful. Um, but, you know, it's really, Michael's really sort of coming into his own now and really sort of getting really strong with the sort of pair elements. You know, mm-hmm. they're another teams that typically does pretty well on their side-by-side jumps at earlier in this year they had been um practicing a um double axle euler triple sal um they never could kind of get it together to where they were um syn- synchronized with it so i think they, they they took it out a little bit later in the season but you know they're not afraid to kind of really push the technical envelope um and that's really lovely to see and they're really great and i definitely think th- they have an outside chance at the podium is not even outside it's a pretty decent chance at the podium um, they're just going to have to, the, the issue they had, the one main issue they had at Four Continents was the lift. The they lift, had oh my gosh. Go up quite right, and, and they needed to still hold on and get a level three on it for as wobbly and, and shaky as, as she looked going up. That was really impressive, but it was that was the thing that cost them the gold. So they just got to keep all their elements really clean. Um, and they're going to not get the PCS of... Swain Han or James and Cipre, which is going to make it really hard for them to challenge for anything more than bronze. But I definitely think they have an, a, a shot at the bronze medal for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other pairs you want to mention? Um, yeah. I mean, Zabiaco and Invert, um, they're also got a shot. They don't have, at least last I checked, they, their technical, um, the composition of their programs isn't as technically high as some of the other teams. Um, but they're super consistent. I think they, one of them's going back from an injury, so that's going to be interesting to see. Um, Bukova and Kozlowski. Uh, I don't know a ton about them. I did see them earlier in the year. They mm-hmm. were pretty strong, um, had good Grand Prix. So, you know, all of the Russian teams are are definitely in the mix oh, for the yeah. post- Um, Just based on their their elements are, are really crisp and, like, their... Um, their spin, their the pair spins, the the death spirals, the things that a lot of people kind of throw off. The, I find that all the Russian teams have really good wins. Um, the La Monica and Guarese, I think, oh, are yeah. also that have an opportunity for um, to to baby challenge for the podium. And I want to mention also um, uh, the team from North Korea, who people are thinking might not actually come because they were supposed to go to Four Continents, and there was like a weird they be they, they yeah. And so they're also thinking that they might not get to Japan because of these issues, but I think there's a cross for them because they're an excellent te- up and coming team. I really um, saw them for the first time. I think really they really sparked with me at the Olympics. At the Olympics, so, yeah. Uh, I would really love to see them compete at the World Championships, and I think they have an opportunity for top 10. Maybe, probably not a podium finish, uh, but you know, definitely a strong outing would be super great for them. And then Kane and Lil Duke. Mm-hmm. I think. 
their goal for this is really a top 10 finish to get two teams next year. I think that's, if, if they can do that, then it's going to be a success. And if they skate like they skated at the U.S. championships, I think they actually have a really good shot. Um, but the Paris field is actually pretty strong. So we'll see. But uh, but I feel I'm feeling good for them. I think that I think they have an opportunity, a good shot to top 10, top eight. And I think for them, that would be a success. Yeah. Paris field, obviously really strong. But believe it or not, I think maybe less strong in the years past, as Deanna Stilato yeah. maybe have mentioned in the U.S. you know uh, press conference. Um, I think it was for four continents. No, it was for nationals. So there's a chance, obviously, with the retirement of the, the Germans and, you know, only two Chinese pairs instead of three. Now's the time. Please, Tim LeDuc and Ashley Kane, don't let the pressure get the best of you all because they can do it. They can. They absolutely can. Yes. Uh, what it's uh, going to take is just getting all their levels, and they won in the short and the long. And you know what? I'm always really impressed by the side-by-side -side triple loops. It's just sometimes it's called under by Ashley. So I'm like, I know you guys can do a triple flip. Is it worth changing that up? Because us Americans want two spots back. Or is it just me? And they actually got pretty good PCS. They got competitive PCS at Four Continents. So I, th I think if they can skate clean... I think the judges are ready to, to, to give them the marks for a top 10 finish for sure. So fingers mm -hmm. crossed. Yes. And um, not only that, we want them to qualify for the free skates as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we can <laughs> qualify this free skate. So. Yes. Also, you know, in um, both, I don't know if Europeans and the Four Continents, having so, they had so few teams at Four Continents that everybody qualified. Uh, except for like men's one Man One. did not qualify, yeah. which is sad. Like, let, let it, it through. Let's skate. Come on. People in California have the time. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we move on to, do you want to do ladies or men's? Um, let's do ladies. Ladies. Okay. Well, let's just, you know, talk about a little bit of the drama first, because I haven't followed it too closely, but the Russia, the yeah. Russian Federation has named their team a few times when it sounds like yeah but Evgenia will be going will she be vying for a gold medal I don't know but she's still a fan favorite yeah you know the the Russian nationals had a you know all of these like tiny like quad jumping like teenagers like preteens <laughs> none of whom were eligible to go to any of the other stuff so uh, they all right, the Junior <laughs> Cup or whatever. Yeah, well, they had they had Europeans and then they had Russia Cup or something, oh. and they were like, we're gonna take look at all of these, we're gonna put it together, and we're gonna decide who. And then they they earlier in the week they named the the team, and people were like, what? And then they had a, some sort of closed door vote or something, and then mm -hmm. that was what stood. So your your Russian ladies are Zagitova, Samardarova, both of whom seem to make pretty good sense. Samardarova the European champion, yeah. Sur surprise, I think, European champion, Zagitova. Um, and then the third spot originally was Konstantinova, mm -hmm. who has not skated well in either of those things. Um, and then, but really it was between Medvedeva and Tutmishiva. How did and, they leave out Liza? Mm. Yeah. And the, the, Vote and I read somewhere that the vote was like nineteen for Medvedeva, seven for Tutmishiva, I think. Um, and so the Medvedeva is going, even though she's arguably had a worse season than Tutmishiva, who medaled at both of her Grand Prix, medaled at the Grand Prix final, got sidelined ahead of Russian nationals with pneumonia. Um, so yeah, she's her her season. She lost the momentum. I think mm -hmm. had she been. Nationals, had she finished in the top three, I think it would have been an easy pick for Tutumisheva and we wouldn't be having this discussion. Um, but because she got pneumonia and, you know, there was, she was in the hospital during Russian Nationals yeah. and tweeting from the hospital. Also, follow Liza on Twitter. She's. Oh, yeah. Follow um, her right now. Um, and so, yeah, so I think, I think Medvedeva, she looked stronger at Russia Cup or whatever happened <laughs> with that last competition um, that she has all season. Um, I think, I think, sh I think, I think gold's going to be hard for her. I think, I think gold's going to be really hard for her. The Kihira, the, uh, every Japanese, Japanese. lady, Zagitova is muscling this stuff out. I have seen people who said that Zagitova 
is looking a little shaky, and I would agree that she does not look as strong this year as she had last year. Um, but she's got the will, like she's got iron will. So, mm -hmm. um, but 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 has definitely struggled um, after the post Grand Prix season. Like she did not skate great at nationals. She did not skate the best at European. So, I, I put her as a question mark too. I could see these three Russian ladies being in the top five. I could see them being like eight through twelve. Like it really just kind of depends on the day and if they're skating and they're skating strong. I think. Samadarova has actually been the most consistent, but I think has the least amount of potential here based solely on PCS. Like Zagita yeah, she's still so new. Yes. Um, so, um, but you know, when people fall apart, she's the one who's skating clean and being consistent. So we'll see. Um, I predict that one of them will be on the podium, but I'd de I don't think a Russian sweep or anything like that yeah, is going to no. happen. I would actually say that Zagita has struggled post the Olympics, actually, yes. you know, barely or muscling her wins that she's had since. And also, Sophia, by the way, she looks up to Ashley Wagner. She gave a quote to the press saying she loves the way Ashley performs. So obviously, I love her and I love that Absolutely. free skate. I know a little, some people said it was a little too much for them, but I'm sorry, we can't ask for face and then complain that it's too much. No, that's, that's not a thing in Justin's world. So I love the face, <laughs> love the performance, love the dress. And then, yeah, um, Evgenia, I, I, I would not have been upset had she not been named to the world team just because I think she could use the rest and the training. You know, this is the first season with the new coach. But I'm, I'm just sad that, um, you know, people seem to forget that Elisaveta has added the triple axle back to her repertoire. And it's amazing. You know, she goes for it all the time. She doesn't hit it all the time, but there are always really good attempts. So that's just really unfortunate. I'm, I understand that no, there's no perfect choice that makes everybody happy but i was a little bummed that liza was left out i do think that there's a strong potential for a japanese podium sweep in the ladies Definitely. yes and i'm gonna say i i think rika kihira has the momentum going for the gold medal and um the two words triple axel in both programs um, <laughs> she's not able to land i haven't seen many times it clean in both the short and the long it's kind of like one or the other, but she still wins the competition. But then again, she hasn't competed at Worlds, where I think she'll need she'll need it in both programs. She has been struggling in the short program, and I think it's probably better that way um, because she's coming from behind. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily. I mean, she did well at the Grand Prix final, but I think I, I feel like she's more of a chaser than a leader. Speaking of Ashley Wagner, I think Ashley Wagner I would say she's similar, right? Like mm -hmm. she's. The best spot that she could have been in in 2016 was fourth place after the short oh, program. Yeah. She had a clean short program. And then she had the fire. She was ready. Um, and I think Rika Kahira is similar. And so she sometimes struggles to to nail that triple axle. She you typically pops it in the short program when she does when she does miss it, and then put that puts herself at a disadvantage going to the long program and then comes and slays the long program. So I think that and because of the technical um, the technical components. Um, of her free skate, she has a little bit of leeway too. And so what she has been doing um, lately is actually not even doing two triple axles yeah. in a free skate. Although she did, we did see that earlier in the year, I think at NHK trophy um, and then just doing one triple axle in the free skate and still winning by eight points, having, having been down by seven to begin mm -hmm. with or something <laughs> like she's got the, the, the breathing room to be able to do that. Um, I don't know necessarily if it's a sort of game time decision or if they do the warm up and then she goes to her coach and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to do one triple axel, not two. I think but that's I actually it from what I read in an interview. Yeah. So she decides during warm up. So, but if she skates clean, I think if she skates a clean short and long, regardless of whether she does two triple axles and long or one, it's going to be really tough to catch her. The judges have been giving her actually great PCS as well. Um, maybe for me, maybe a little high. Um, mm -hmm. Just based yeah. on sort of like the, her program is a little sort of juniory, which of course makes sense because of her age and stuff. And I, I do think that I think her PCS is a couple points high to me sometimes, um, especially when she's popping the jumps. I, I think I, def I there's not been a single time that she has won this year that I have said that she shouldn't have won. Mm -hmm. um, I just I just think her PCS is a little high for where she is because she's going to only grow and get better and more amazing. And, 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 you know, she has room to do that. And I think the numbers should reflect that. But I think she's got she is going to win barring a meltdown yeah like the other girls should be worried if the scores are close after the short program 
with Rika's, you yeah. know, assuming she made the mistake. I was like, no, you you can't be w- a leading Rika by one after the short program and think you're in a good spot for the long. <laughs> um, I love Satoko Miyahara. Yes. She's lovely and wonderful and awesome. Um, I want her to skate well and I want all her jumps to be counted. I want her to skate clean jumps and then I want them to be counted as clean jumps. Um, but her... Her skating skills are probably the best of the pack. Um, she's just phenomenal. Um, and definitely a chance for the shot of, shot for gold. You know, mm-hmm. I think that Kahira is going to have to make a mistake. I think Zagitova is going to have to be wobbly, I think, for Satoko to win. But she definitely has the opportunity. I think the same for Kaori Sakamoto, who I think should have been leading uh, at Four Continents after the short program. Uh, I'll just put that out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, just saying. Um, but she did not have the, she, you know, she popped a jump in the, the free state. Yeah. Um, but she's been looking really strong this year as well. So I think all of the Japanese ladies and all the Russian ladies definitely have, I, I think it's going to, I think a Japanese sweep is possible. I think a Russian sweep is less possible. I think a Japanese Russian podium is probably highly, highly likely. Absolutely. I wouldn't predict anything else because Carolina Costner from Italy will not be competing. So we'll be missing her. Um, she's usually around to shake things up. So I'm going to miss that. But yeah, what I was going to say, Satoko, uh, I've been reading some things on Twitter. Listen, I log on to Twitter and I'm surprised by the skating news every day. And I'm just like, what? But it really does sound like people are translating her articles from interviews that she is really trying to work on her overall program for Worlds. So maybe it was a good thing that she missed Four Continents to change some of the layout. And then Kaori, those jumps, man, there's this, sometimes it's just like zero question about whether it's rotated or not. And I love that. Her triple loop in the short program at Four Continents should have been plus fives across the board. Yeah. It, it was just like, it was effortless. It was huge. It was beautiful. The landing was crispy. She had the nice ride. Like her jumps, I had not, I don't think they had ever, I'd never seen them stronger than they were at, at that short program. Oh, she looked like she was ready to win at that free yeah. skate. So yeah, maybe she will win at Worlds or at least be on the podium. We'll see. Possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about our two American ladies, Brady Tunnell and Mariah Bell. A, a top six would be great for one of them. Yeah, I, I think I think definitely possible. Um, Mar- I really love Mariah's short program. Uh, I also love Celine Dion. So yeah, okay, just, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think that it's really good for her. She seems to really be enjoying um, performing it. I do think she was hosed a little bit uh, on PCS. You can talk talk to Jackie. Jackie Wong, he agreed to yeah. me. <laughs> um, the short program at Four Continents. Um, that was so good. She um she's not doing a triple triple in her free skate, and I think that's going to although that may that may be different now, but she had has not been doing a triple triple in her free skate this season thusly. Um, so I think she might not have the TES, the technical score or the technical um makeup of her program to challenge for the podium or maybe even challenge for a top six. I just don't, I don't think her base base levels are there. Um, I think if she gets a top 10, that's going to be great. That being said, it's going to be really difficult. I think for the ladies to get three spots, not impossible, but it's going to be hard. Um, I think that um, Brady, Brady started off really strong this season. Um, She has been trying to push the envelope with her technical difficulty, adding the triple flip, triple loop or trip. No triple lutz, triple loop. Triple triple loop. Yeah, triple loop. And then in the first half of the program, they're doing the triple triple toe in the second half of the program. Um, she has been struggling a little bit with some under rotations. Um, she the, the she was in a senior B early in the year. I can't remember which one. Uh, but um, she skated a lights out free program. And it, I mean, with the two triple triples, everything I think was cold clean. I think yeah. she went under. Um, but like huge score, and I was like, oh, this this is it. Like she's coming. She's coming. Although that was just it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then has struggled to to do that in the later later in the season. She originally was doing the Lutz loop in her short program, switched it out for the Lutz toe, which was a more comfortable jump for her. Um, and then got rid of the Lutz loop in the free skate to do the Lutz toe earlier, which is good because one of the things that had also been happening later in the season was that she was getting under, she, if she, she, she was popping sometimes the loop or, or, and then getting unders on the Lutz toe in the second half of the program. So I think the, I saw what the program could be. I think for consistency sake, I think it's good that she has done what she has done. Um, I think she has a better shot at a top five finish than Mariah, 
but it's going to require her to skate 100% clean in both programs as well as some mistakes from the other ladies. And she hasn't skated 100% clean to clean program since that senior B whose name I, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but, but if she does, I think a top five finish is likely. And if she can get a top five finish and Mariah can finish like eighth, I think that's possible. It's still going to be super difficult and people are still going to need to make mistakes. I think if everybody skates clean, I mean, if everybody skates clean, it's going to be a struggle for either one of the Americans to be in the top eight. That's right. And also our American girls, they can go for the difficult technical jumps, the combinations, but they're always really dicey. Like even Mariah Bell, I was like, whoa, her left toe was clean in the short at Four Continents, but whoa, it looked real close. And then Brady Tanell, I'm just like, are you doing let's loop or let's toe? I can't. And then when it's the let's loop, it's always a pop at the loop. And I'm like, girl, why? That's the worst thing you can do. And it was unfortunate at Skate America. You know, a lot of people thought that she would at least be close to winning or at least land on the podium. And ladies was the only discipline where the United States didn't have someone on the podium and win a medal. So that was really unfortunate. And then, you know, there's the chatter about nationals of Brady is not consistent when she was branded the consistent one early in her career. I was like, okay, who really did that though? Like, <laughs> I mean, I, w I will say that uh, skating Twitter, I love skating Twitter, but, but I think they do have a point that a lot of people put a lot. And I know that they're probably talking about Phil, and um, win and people, but they, they do put a lot of pressure on these up and coming skaters and then get mad when they don't stand up to the hype that they built on them. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's hard to say someone is consistent when they've only, they started calling her consistent last year on her first year where she really did like a full senior season. And then this year they're like, Oh, she's not consistent. And she never, I don't think she ever really was like that consistent you know, creating the hype train and then throwing people under it when they're not living up to the, the hype that you created for them is really rude. And, and it happens. So I would like a lot of people were, telling, were saying after um, uh, nationals to just let Alyssa Liu just be a yeah, kid. Absolutely. And don't like have all of these expectations on her and she'll probably do better that way. So, yeah. Yeah, at least she's debuting on the Junior Grand Prix circuit, which is a lot less pressure <laughs> this upcoming season. And yeah, and Brady, to think about it, I think... When she won nationals, that was her first medal at senior nationals ever. So it's like, you know, if she had been so consistent, she would have at least been like, you know, fourth or third seasons prior, but she wasn't. So love skating Twitter for that input. Let's see who else is there. Can we talk about my Canadian girls? Absolutely. And there's two of them because it's Gabrielle Dalman and then Aurora Kotop. Yes. Uh, their goal, they have three spots. Um, we'll talk about Elaine later. But uh, their goal is to get two, which requires one of the ladies to place in the top ten. And, you know, I, it's not impossible. I love my girl, Gabby Dalman, but I don't have high expectations for what she'll actually put out because she's uh, rebuilding herself this season personally and skating-wise, and that's A-OK. -okay. But, yeah, top ten, you know, that's possible. And then Elaine Chartran is... Ooh, she is, to me, is a definition of hot or cold. I mean, my friend Nolan and I, we talk about it. She lands the triple let's triple toe at the beginning of the program. The rest is good. She misses that. The rest of the program falls apart. Sometimes she stays on her feet, but she gets a lot of carrots. If you don't know what that means, carrots equals under rotation marks on the jumps. Sometimes a double carrot. So I, just, I don't know what to expect, but I'm excited that there are three Canadian ladies. Aurora Kotop. You know, her main goal will just be to qualify for the free skate. This is good experience for her. She's so young, 16. Um, love her short program. Uh, it's a lot of bird music. So, you know, paying respect to Patrick Chan and Adam Rippon. So happy for my Canadian ladies. I am. Um, yeah, I think Elaine is interesting because Elaine has won Canadian Nationals twice. And every time that she has won, she has gone on to the rest of the season and really, really struggled after having skated really solidly at Canadian Nationals. And I wonder if it's um, a matter of peaking too early or yeah. a matter of like, because usually when she comes, when, usually when she wins, she comes in, comes in as not the favorite. So mm -hmm. she comes in favorite she has no pressure she skates freely she skates out she you know skates really well wins and then I feel like there's like pressure to to perform well and I think the good part about this particular world is I don't think there is a ton of pressure on her at least from the viewpoint of the federation yeah. right because like what you're saying is someone needs to end up in top 10 and likely the per that person I think the person who has the best chance is Gabby Daleman based on you know just 
previous um, results, um, judges really like her um, when she's clean. When that triple toe, triple toe is clean, oh. it's clean. Plus fives <laughs> across the board. Um, yeah, so she's definitely got potential. You, like you said before, she has ha- hasn't been out a lot this year. She's going to be one of those people similar to the dance teams that we talked about earlier who haven't had the mileage on the program mm-hmm. and the judges haven't seen them because she doesn't skate. Um, earlier, she didn't skate on the Grand Prix this year. But she was, like you said, she was taking care of herself, which is super important in this sport to take some time to take care of yourself. And she's been really open and, and honest and transparent about those struggles. And I think that is probably going to be helpful too for girls who are coming up in the sport as well. Um, so I think she definitely has an opportunity and a shot. I think she's going to have to skate stronger than I've seen her skate this year, but I definitely yeah. think it's possible. Absolutely, she wasn't um, too far off at Canadian Nationals. And I think, like you said, Aurora is like, let's just make it to the free skate. And I think Elaine can just kind of do whatever she wants. I think that um, the ladies in Canada, their their field's not as deep. And so I think even if she totally bombs this world, it's like not going to be the end of the world, honestly. Yeah, that's right. All right, so moving away from North America, let's talk about Elizabeth Terzenbaeva. Wow, four continents. Game changer. She's. I feel like she's always had the potential. Um, you know, she's bounced around. She went from a Terry to Brian to back to a Terry. Um, she. I think she blew people away at Four Hondas, and I'm one of those people. Like, she's always been like a you know sixth, seventh, eighth. Like, um, you know, decent, okay, not amazing. She also sometimes struggles to skate clean. Um, but, you know, and then in at Fort Continents, she attempted a quad Salcow. I think it was culturally rotated. Yes. So, um, yeah, you know, a Terry, a Terry man, making making people make do quads. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, I wouldn't have said that she was a dark horse for the podium two months ago. And now I'm thinking potentially if she can land that quad Sal um, and skate the rest of her program cleanly, uh, she might have a shot. And that's, I don't, wouldn't have said that before, I don't think. So that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's, she's looking strong. She's, her jumps are look, have more snap, which is interesting because a Terry's people don't, a Terry's students tend to, to not really have good snap on their jumps. They do a lot of, they muscle it with their arms, yeah. which is when they get to be older, when they get to be more womanly, they struggle with the rotation. Um, but Elizabeth's like 18 and has stayed really tiny. Yeah, and she's I a little that, taller, but still thin. Yeah, and I think that that has probably helped her. Uh, as far as like a Terry's um, sort of process and technique for jumps, um, her snaps looking really good. So, uh, hey, I love it. And I hope that she skates really well. Same here. I think Elizabeth is someone who's had a lot of attention and hype around her from a young age because she was known as Brian Orser's pupil and then never really quite delivered when people thought she would at ages like 16 and 17. And I'm glad that she made this coaching change because otherwise I thought she had kind of looked like she was plateauing in her career. But like Four Continents, I see a resurgence in her and I'm excited to see not only what she does at Worlds, but next season as well. Um, let's talk, let's touch on, um, Insu Lim, who oh, yeah. had a lovely, um, short program at Four Continents, had a little bit of a struggle in the free skate, but I think she's one of those people who always is kind of like, right, she's right there. She's like, right there. And she's so close. Um, she, her skating is beautiful. I love her short program. I love her short program costume too. It's mm, phenomenal. Gorgeous. She always looks amazing. Um, I think that, and, and, and she also is one of those ones who is starting to get that, the PCS bump from the judges. She struggles on the, with a long program on consistency of some of the jumps has been known to get called some under rotations called, but if she skates clean, she could definitely hit top 10 and that would give, I don't even know if there, uh, no, there are, there are, that would give another, um, lady skater from South Korea. So I, th- I definitely think that, that she's more than capable of top 10 in here. Um, she just needs to skate clean. Yeah, it's not a shoe in though, because um, I hear a lot about Yunsu, and I'm like, oh, yeah. But then you look at the results, and she's always a little, like, I go from the top first, and she's always kind of, like, down there. But then when you watch her, you're like, ooh, this is, like, a world-class lady skater. And she skates like a woman for still being young. Yes. Like, how old is she? And her jumps are good. Yeah, it's it's a consistency thing. Also, I think sometimes she's low-balled in PCS. Like, I'm like, okay, judges, all right, you know, that was a good skate. So... You're right. She's someone to look out for. Anybody else? Um, yeah, I think um, Alexia Paganini had a really interesting uh, 
start to her season, skated mm-hmm. really well. I think medaled on the Grand Prix. Am I remembering that right? Maybe. Um, I think or a senior B. Now I'm gonna look. I'm just gonna look. <laughs> I'm looking oh, with you. Cross Telecom. Mm-hmm. Um, and and skated super strong. Um, she doesn't have the the her programs don't have the technical uh they're not some of the higher technical jumps and things That's she doesn't right. do harder jumps and so i don't think that she's going to probably not going to figure in the top 10 um but definitely well maybe she might have an outside shot at the top 10 um she needs to skate clean yeah. um but um but yeah she um roberta rodigiro oh, who is coming back. um so i'm really excited to see her because b- before she was injured um, she was really starting to make a mark and she had really good momentum. And then she had a, I can't remember what kind of injury, but had surgery and stuff. So she's been out for a while. So, um, I'm really excited to see her and, uh, Laureen Le Cavier. The, oh yeah. From France. Oh, interesting because they're, you know, this, she, there's her and there's May Bernice Mete and they kind of go back and forth. And I feel like they t- tend to go for whoever ends up higher at Euros. So like some years it's May Bernice and some years it's Laureen. I would love for Laureen to top 10 so that they can both skate. Um, I think that it's going to be really, really, really hard. Um, she has been struggling this season to skate consistently as well. Um, and again, her jumps aren't just, she's not jumping the harder jumps. So I think it's going to be difficult. Um, but uh, we'll see. She hasn't had a lot of attention on her since the program where she debuted that the costume change free skate like she really made a statement that year then you know she's kind of been struggling a little bit afterwards had some coaching changes so I, I would like to see her kind of be more prominent so hopefully a good skate at worlds will do that i personally am excited to see kylani crane from I australia was about, i was about to say we got to talk about kylani four continents she finally finally broke 60 in the short program and that's still with i think like two under rotation calls so it's like okay thank you judges keep going for the triple loop triple loop combination that's your jump and ooh, that free skate though Ooh, i have a beautiful dress <laughs> i i think a stronger free skate is what she's more than capable of doing at worlds absolutely uh, and let's see um program well, at four minutes was really great so i was really excited to see that yeah there's uh let's see someone i always see nicole is it schmidt from germany yeah, Shot. she's always yeah. like lower in the standings, but I, I I kind of like watching her. I've been seeing her for a while, so yeah. No, she's she's had a decent season. Mm-hmm. Um, she is one of those people who has the opportunity potentially to, if she skates well, um, and she doesn't get called unders. Um, she's got an opportunity to to make a push for that sort of like second tier. Um, and the other one is Nicole Rykova, who oh. Rykova, who. I think was injured earlier this year, so we'll see how she's doing. Um, but also, she was working on harder triple triples too. So if she's got that, I can't remember if she was doing flip toe or let's toe. But um, if she's if her jumps are back, um, she could definitely be figuring into the top ten, top twelve. Yeah. Did we mention Lena from Belgium yet? Oh no, she um, she she sometimes has some really good jumps. Yes, and I believe she's another one of those people who is skating to Celine, whom I love, um, and had a really strong start to her season, and I think had an injury and pulled out of her um, the other parts of other competitions of the season. Because I want to mm-hmm. say she skated really strong at a senior B uh, early in the season. Um, that's when she did, she's skating to that. It's all coming back to me now, which is my favorite karaoke jam. So if you're ever with me and we're karaoke, be prepared. Okay, we're um, doing it. But yeah. So we'll see how she's going to do at Worlds coming back from this injury. Um, her the start of her season was so good. And I think she even, I think she skated one Grand Prix and I think she skated really well. I think she was top five or six. Okay. Um, and then I don't think did her nationals didn't do the rest of her season. So this is going to be the first time we will have seen her since like October. So I'm hoping that her, um, that she's her injury. She's coming, coming back from it good and strong. Cause I think she was starting to have some momentum at the beginning of the year and be really nice to see her skate. Well, yeah. I remember at the senior B too, like a lot of skating fans were watching because we were so deprived of skating over the summer <laughs> and we were just like, Whoa, the, yeah, 
short program and the jumps were on. And then I remember at Skate America, I think is where she skated. You know, she did fine, but I think I was expecting her to be on the podium based on the results of her senior B. So it's kind of something you got to take into consideration, the scoring at a senior B versus for continent or uh, like a Grand Prix. And then also the scoring is really wacky between like Europeans and four continents, even though I keep bringing up those two competitions. <laughs> yeah. So is that all the ladies? Um, I think that's, uh, I think we've done a good job at catching we up. We have, all the yes. Okay. So men's, Nathan Chen, will he still remain undefeated? The U.S. is blessed to have you. I'm telling you. Um, I know that his national scoring is suspect. It is. I know. I know it's suspect. Um, I know that when those scores came, people were like, eh. Um, but he skated cleaner than I, than since, last year when he botched the short program and then, you know, skated lights out at the Olympics, right? Yeah. Like he, um, but, but I feel like though, if he puts together two skates, like he did at us nationals, even given national scoring, it's going to be really hard to beat him. And I think the only person who has a shot is Yuzuru Hanyu. And that's only if he's coming, like he's been injured. So I don't know what, I don't know how things are going for Yuzuru, but I think that if he skates, if both of them skate clean, Yuzuru's, probably going to take it even though nathan is jumping harder jumps user is going to have higher pcs deserved i i don't yeah. please your zero fans don't come to me i we i appreciate you too i do yes. we do oh, God, he's and, so good. And, and if and if all things are equal and everybody's gets clean he's going to win and he should mm-hmm. um but he's a question mark because he's been injured and you know brian people have been asking brian about how he's doing and he's been cagey because that's what your coach is supposed to do you're supposed to protect people so um I think that it. I think that sh- other people have sh- small shots, but if that happens, if, if anybody either than Yuzuru Hanyu or Nathan Chen wins, it's because Yuzuru and Nathan fell a lot, a lot, like not just once or popped one or two jumps, because that could be worse. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's going to be a struggle for anyone else to win gold with both of them skating. Yeah, I but think- whether. Whoever wins is good, going to be dependent on the day and how um, user is coming back from his injury. Because no one, I don't think anybody has a question mark now about Nathan and his training situation because of the absolute murder he did uh, at Nationals, just throwing down. He just killed it. So, Yeah, I was chatting with someone not too long ago. I think they were in the comments of one of my like recent videos. And they actually think that Nathan starting school is a blessing because maybe he can compartmentalize his ideas at this time and this skating is now fully his responsibility like he needs to show up for those skype sessions with raf and yeah. make the most out of um you know his schooling and his training and yeah that's probably a really good thing um i know i say i said i'm not a betting man and i'm not but i would kind of like to have some fun and bet someone on this because i don't know i have a really good feeling about nathan chen just because i think yuzuru hanyu wants the third olympic gold medal so much that he tends to peak at the Olympic year or the year beforehand. I mean, if you're going to pick, why not pick that? Right? So, you know, no, this, the Yuzuru Hanyu, just as amazing as always, like how he lands those jumps. And, you know, the asthma is no longer a, a, a big problem in his skating. Like he's not out of breath during these programs. And I don't know how, like still going for some rather difficult a quad jumps. But then also we have Shoma Uno, also super impressive. I think sometimes does not as difficult or sometimes one fewer quad than maybe Nathan Chen does, but still, you know, he's got an outside shot at the gold medal. Also amazing that four continents this year was Shoma's first, like, yes, like major, um, you know, championship win. Like he's been around for, you know, a while. He, and he was injured. <laughs> yeah. And he's always like, he has like cat reflexes. Like his knee bend is so he, the, he saves jumps that I don't know how anybody can save. Um, his skating skills are beautiful. His step sequences, he should do tutorial videos on step sequences. They're <laughs> all phenomenal. Um, but also a question mark because he was injured at Four Continents. Now they were going to have a decent amount of time in between Four Continents and World. So if his injury wasn't too severe, hopefully he'll come back from that and, and have strong skates. But, um, but yeah, it, he's phenomenal. I he's definitely in the mix definitely could fight definitely fighting for the podium and if yuzuru and nathan fall to pieces i would put shoma as the next person up 
Um, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for him to get anything higher than third. Yeah, people have criticized me in the past because they say, you know, uh, he's an amazing jumper. And people are like, have you seen the way he lands him? And I was like, yes, I get that his knees are really low and he saves them. But here's the thing. I think it takes skill, amazing skill to save a jump, especially when it goes off axis. So yeah, you know, and sometimes they're not pretty landings. So he's still good at jumping because he saves them. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think um, the, uh, let's go ahead and knock out uh, Keiji Tanaka, um, who had a really strong, um, was it last year world that he was really, like he had a really good world, I guess it was last year. Mm -hmm. um, he, he doesn't, I feel like he doesn't have a ton of pressure on him. There's absolutely no way that Japan's not going to have three spots next year. So, you know, just come skate. Yeah. Skate out. <laughs> be fine. You're going to be fine. Right. Let's see here. But the top finish is not out of the realm of possibility for him, maybe even top eight. Um, you know, well, the, the other, there are other men who have higher technical difficulty in their programs who are going to get better PCS, but they're also more volatile. And if KG just skates well and clean, he could definitely top eight, top six even. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's still quite an accomplishment. Uh, and we were talking about Nathan Chen earlier. Because of Nathan Chen, U.S. men have three spots. So there's Vincent Joe and then Jason Brown. You know, Vincent's kind of really, really wanting a, a world medal, like really badly. And then Jason Brown is just trying to get mileage on his quad sal cow attempts. Yeah, so I think um, I think that the U.S. are most definitely, highly, highly likely going to get three spots next year. Thanks, Max Aaron, for the third spot this year. I said it on Twitter. I'll say it again. I saw that. Uh, I, the only reason we have three spots is because Max Aaron came in 11th after not making the Olympic team and still going home and train. And so thank you for that, Max. Um, I think that Nathan Chen, at his worst, is still going to medal. So I think a top 10 finish for both J Jason and Vincent is also highly likely. Even though Jason, because of the new scoring system, the things that Jason does, it benefits Jason because it highlights and prioritizes the things he does really well, which is the quality of his jumps, the quality of his landings, except for the axles kind of squidgy sometimes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, doing everything, do the things you do, do them really, really well. And Jason does most of his stuff very, very well versus Vincent, who jumps a lot of quads and sometimes gets them called under the landings aren't necessarily the cleanest. So I think that um, both of them have an excellent shot at making top 10 finishes, top, eight finishes, top six finishes. It's definitely possible. Um, I'm feeling like Jason's probably going to go for the quad sal in the long program. Um, I haven't seen, I don't believe he has landed it in competition Not this clean. year. There have been plenty of practice videos of him landing it. I would love to see him land it just to get the, like the monkey off of his back. Yeah. Um, the one thing that has been really good about his skating this year is that even when he has popped it, which is generally what he does is pop it at four continents. He did it, but fell did he fall i can't remember he fell um but he's generally been okay at coming after that like like attempting it and then whatever happens happens and then going on to skate a, a pretty clean program he, that's mm -hmm. what he did at, um at, during this grand prix um so i don't expect anything less i would love to see him land it um because you know he, he had been landing in practice quad toes and quad sals back when he was with Corey. Yeah. so it's not that he can't do it it's just like a, a i think what the he'll do it what if he does it one time in competition i think that's gonna break that mental hurdle and i think that he's gonna then be it'll be easier for him to do it consistently i think that he's going to need a quad i think he's probably in order to be competitive for podiums at things like worlds He's going to need one in the short and the long. I think it, he's too far behind after the short program. Um, I don't think in the past I would have said he's going to need three, right? Um, yeah. You know, two, two cells and a toe. And I don't think that's the case anymore. No. But I think he's definitely going to need two, one in each program um, to if he wants to be in the podium discussion for stuff like Four Continents and Worlds. I think, um, well, not even necessarily Four Continents, but, but definitely Worlds. Um, yeah. Finals, stuff like that. Um, so, but I'm looking forward to seeing him. I love, I love his programs this year. Yeah. I love his short hair. Um, he, he seems like a completely different skater. Um, he's looking really strong. I love him with Tr him and Tracy, like together, oh, yeah. together. I, I feel like a really nice, like warm vibe. 
Um, he seems to be thriving in Toronto. So, I mean, more power to him. I think that um, I hope he stays for the full quad. I don't know what his plans are, but I feel like that is, I think that's the goal, maybe? That's his goal. I've heard him say that in an interview. The goal is the Olympics. So I would love to see him keep on keeping on. I would love to see him continue to get stronger. I'd love to see him land this quad. Because uh, I think it, it'll just take one time, and then he'll be like, I can do this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think he's great. I think Vincent Vincent has been interesting this year. Um, he early in the season he struggled with unders a lot, and then I don't necessarily know if it helps that his coach Tom Z has been very vocal about the calling of those jumps. Um, I'm not a technical specialist, uh, but I can see that a lot of times those jumps are clearly under. Um, now I agree with Tom that there should be more better cameras. Because mm-hmm. apparently one technical camera is really like garbage and old, and like like there's there's the technology exists for them to do this better. But I feel like if they were looking closer, I think even more of Vincent's jumps would get dinged. <laughs> I think he would benefit from dialing it back. I mean, Javier Fernandez won World Championships and won Olympic medal with thousand toes. You yeah. don't need and lutzes and loops. You don't you don't need them. You don't need them to be competitive. And I th- I think that Vincent would benefit from picking two quads and really working to make those, like, c- tight and clean. And then putting, you know, put two in the short and four in the long if you want to. Do two. Can you repeat more than two quads? I don't know. Actually, no, you, you can only two. repeat two you can only quads. Repeat one. So, so, yeah. So, do do two quads. Do a sal and a toe if that's your... Or, I mean, pick the flip or the lutz. Like, I don't really care. But, like, pick two. Don't try to do four. You're not going to do four well. There are only there's only one person in the world who skates and does four quads well, and that's name is Nathan Chen. Yeah. Um, so so pick your two, and then max out. Do two do your toe in the sal in the short. Do two toes in a sal in the long or whatever. And I think he will be better served by doing that than continuing to try to do all of the quads because he I know he's working on his component marks and stuff, but like having sloppy landings is not helping his his PCS. So no. uh, that's my that's my suggestion for Vincent. He's, I'm certain he's watching. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I agree with the strategy to catch up with Nathan Chet because that's what it seems like it is right now. Um, but I think he definitely has an opportunity for a top five six finish, and that's really all it's going to take in order for us to have three spots. Like I, I will be blown away if the U.S. doesn't have three men's spots at the end of Worlds because our our guys are actually really strong. All mm-hmm. things considered. Yeah. So let's talk about some European men. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is Koftun. Oh, no, not Koftun. Um, who's the other? Mikhail Koyata. Why did Isha. I say Koftun? Yes. Or Pineapple King. Yes. I, I love calling him Pineapple King. Who, Mikhail Koyata has all of the potential to be a top three skater. All of it. His skating skills are phenomenal. He's not doing the quad lutz this year, which is kind of a bummer because his was beautiful. Um, he's just been having a really incon- inconsistent season. He has not had clean skates. He's been really struggling with consistency. Um, and so I put him as a big question mark. But if he skates both of his programs clean, could absolutely be a top three finisher. Um, but I, I, I haven't seen it this year. So I think no. he's, that's, he's really going to have to work on that. He's, he's just been struggling. He's been struggling, especially in the long program. Um, so I don't know, but I, I, my fingers are crossed for him because I think, uh, he has all the potential in the world and I don't hate him as a Russian skater. There are some Russian skaters that I, actually, I don't hate any of these Russian guys this, this go around. No, we really um, love Sergei Voronov because, um, he's within our age group. <laughs> I, uh, yes, I really, I wanted to have a, a world group with like Sergei and Mikhail Brezhna and, like, there was a point where someone said Chris Caluza was coming back, and he's, like, 28. Like, I wanted all of these, like, dudes that were 28 and older skating in the same um, the same skating group at Worlds, which is not happening, but I really I really wanted it to happen because I thought that would be really uh, fun. Even the idea just makes me smile. Uh, <laughs> you know what other country has some really good male skaters is Italy, especially from the European uh, Championships. Yeah, so uh, Matteo Rizzo has had a pretty good season this year. Mm-hmm. He's, he's Italy's lone... Um, male skater but i think definitely has the opportunity for a top 10 um and to get two skaters for next year i think that's definitely within his reach for sure um but yeah he's he's been skating skating really strong this year Mm -hmm. yeah it's unfortunate uh, there aren't two spots for worlds for italy 
And then let's see here, other European, I'm looking at the, go ahead. Let's step to Russia for a second, because I want to yeah. talk about Avtune, yeah. who has been MIA for a while and is coming back this year and had a really um, good strong skate his, at his last competition. I have never been his biggest fan because I feel like his jumps, he, his jump technique, he bends really far forward before he, t he picks back and it always looks a little gangly and sloppy, but I love me an underdog and I think that um, he, and I love a comeback story. Um, so I'm feeling re I feel like he's, I mean, he's a Russian champion for the first time in a couple of years and that's really exciting. So he didn't have the best um, Euros, so but I, I have my fingers crossed for him. You know what's this. funny? Is yeah. that um, I really, really like Kovtun when he skates clean, which, you know, happens every now and then, where I just think, like, the whole program comes together. So I say things like, he's a great skater. And then people attack me on Twitter and be like, do you see his skating skills? I was like, okay, guys, calm down. I, I You know, it's put things into perspective. He's not an artist, but when I'm sorry, when all the jumps are together, you know, he skates really fast. Yes, his choreography can be bare, but you know, I, I just I, I like the guy. I'm always proud for him when he's clean, though, because I think if one thing's off, other things are off, and he doesn't say the programs then. <laughs> yeah, and then Alexander Samarin, I oh. he's good. Mm -hmm. He uh, medaled at Euros, so that's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, he's got momentum coming into it. I think he's definitely one of those ones who could surprise us or be a complete utter disaster. Right? Depends on the day. <laughs> um, definitely an opportunity for a top five finish. Um, he's, he skated really strong. His, at Europeans especially, he looked really, really strong. Um, oh, let's talk about Mikhail Brezina. Um, talk about grandpas and uncles. Oh, yeah. Um, I love, I love him. I think that he, I remember back when he was skating to, I can't remember what it was, but he had the Argyle sweater vest thing um, back when he was like fourth in the world. Um, he's been having a resurgent season. I love when he hits the quad style in the short program every time. I'm just like, yay. Um, he, you know, he works with Raph. He's looked really, really good. I, he's another one of those ones I don't know kind of what his plans are, but I feel like he's going to keep going until he can't go anymore. Someone on Twitter said that the, the the Czech Federation won't let him quit. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> they've got like some strong um, juniors up and coming and they just need him to hold on until they get there. That's what I heard. Um, Interesting. But I, I would love a top 10 finish for him. I think he's great. Um, his Sometimes his choices are a little wackadoodle, his music and stuff. But hey, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, but I like him. Um, so I hope that he skates well. Um, Boyang Jin, we should probably talk about him. Oh, that's oh, right. How did we skip him? Red? Always a threat. Um, yes. Has had, had the greatest of seasons, but, you know, skated well at Four Continents. Um, technical um, content always going to make him a threat for the podium. If he skates clean and everybody else doesn't skate clean, could even potentially um, fight for, you know, a top, you know, two or three. But, you know, that would mean that either Nathan or Yuzuru had to utterly fall apart. Yeah, and he's with, a former world medalist. Yeah, but but definitely uh, one of the people fighting for the bronze. Definitely one of the people to keep your eye on. His um, PCS, his choreography, all of the things that he struggled with earlier have been getting better as he's been getting older. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that he's definitely one to watch, and I hope that he skates well. And I think that he has an opportunity to skate well for sure. Yeah, go China. I still miss my Han Yan, but Boyang Jin is here to make things exciting. I am also looking forward to oh, male skater from Australia, Brendan Carey. Yeah. Kind of like an on and off skater is he can do everything such a beautiful quad toe and then sometimes he'll just fib on the axle right after it. Sometimes yeah. skates a, sh a clean short and then a bad long. Um, I like, I always like his program choices. Everyone's questioning me on his, um, is it the grease free skate? Listen, I've never seen the movie, so I'm not sure if he's doing it justice or not. It's entertaining to watch. I like it. Um, looking for some really clean skates here you know he does struggle with consistency but he has it in him so fingers crossed um, for him it would be remiss not to talk about Junwa Cha who's <gasps> having oh my god yes um he like I said only Romeo and Juliet worth watching um also just lovely his skating skills are beautiful I I would pay somebody honestly to sit up there and just like keep a camera trained on Brian Orser every time one of his skaters skates, like it is the best. And, and for some reason, when I catch him, when Jun Wa Cha is skating, he is really into it. And so 
Um, I feel like that um, partnership is working out really well. Um, you know, he made the Grand Prix final. Um, he's been skating really, really well this season. Um, I think that he he had he struggled at Four Continents. He got a lot of unders called in his long program, which I don't think was a thing that he was struggling with earlier in no. the year. Um, but I was listening to was it Ice Talk or something where they were talking about he's skated a lot this year already. Yeah. He had a lot of he's done a lot of senior Bs. He's done a lot of, you know, he had a full um, Grand Prix season, went to the finals. Yeah. Um, you know, he's just he's done a ton of competitions this year, so he might have just been a little tired. Um, so hopefully that he will take some time, rest, and uh, get back to it because he's he's another one that has a, a definite podium potential, and I would love to see him skate clean, especially Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, those under rotations were uncharacteristic of him at Four Continents, and that was unfortunate because um, yeah, I I always dig a Romeo and Juliet goes clubbing long program <laughs> but even with the short program he does a really good job of paying attention to the choreography like he has some moments with like i think it's the clock a movement in the short program that just gets the crowd wild myself included so yeah he's someone to look out for I, i'd say really good shot at top 10 absolutely can can creep for top six i i think that is fair and and, and accurate for sure Mm -hmm. um, we should talk about the Canadian men. <gasps> That's um, right. I I don't know if anybody knows this, or I'm sure I've told some people. But my when we when fantasy skating was happening, my uh, sk fantasy skating team name was Keegan Messing's Glow Up. <laughs> He's been having an amazing season. Um, just killing it so from the senior bees through, like he. It's probably really good that he stopped competing for the U.S. and went to somewhere who would appreciate him. Um, his short program has especially been really strong this year. I mean, I would actually say the glow up started last year at the Olympics when he's, you know, skating in the last group. He was um, part of the, yeah. Yeah, he's been killing it. He's, I'm, I'm here for it. And, um, I, he's not, you know, the youngest guy on the block. So, um, you know, I, I think I heard a nice talk, um, interview with him that basically is like he's taking a year at a time. So I, I hope he sticks around. I think he's, he's skating his best now at like 27 28 years old he's 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 skating his best now he has the two quads he has the opportunity to put it all together he's not going to quite get the pcs of the, some of the top guys but it definitely a top 10 top eight finish for sure within yeah. his race. sometimes he goes for the quad lets it looks like not mm -hmm. often though so you know we'll see what his game plan is uh, his jumps look so good like you're right he's never been better than how he is right now he is such a performer. I say that all the time, but I got to say, I'm ready for new programs. Like, <laughs> I cannot I, wait. <laughs> I can't. I can't disagree with that. Yes. I'm also super excited to see Nam Nguyen. Um, he. We didn't see him last year uh, a ton. Um, you know, he's one of those ones that burst onto the scene as almost like a kid, made a top five, six at Worlds. Um, really, really strong, and then struggled with some growing pain. So, um, I'm excited to see him back. He's I getting his he groove back. I will say that I'm bummed that Kevin Reynolds, I know that he was planning on doing one more season and I really wish that that had that turned out because I really did like him uh, and would have loved to have seen him here one more time. But, um, but Nam is great. They, bo both he and Keegan had the opportunity to, to really, to potentially skate top 10 finishes and that would be really strong for Canada. Um, but uh, yeah, they're great. And I, I think that they're, I think they're both going to do well. I'm feeling and, it. And both. personally, that would be excellent for Nam considering um, he's had uh, world competitions where he didn't qualify for the free skate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this season, you know, it's, it's looking a little different. I love the La La Land free skate. I know everyone comes at me and they're like, but Justin Ashley Wagner. It's like, listen, all skaters I like can skate to good pieces of music. <laughs> okay. Just, you know, less, less strip teasing on the shirt because that was that hindered him in four continents because you could tell him trying to like close it up during a spin and during yeah. the program and that that was not helpful for you know if you're gonna if you're gonna top a one button you know practice that part but yeah quads i like that he goes for them um sometimes has to save them sometimes they're called under but yeah hopefully he's attempting two i think in the short sometimes one sometimes two yeah he can qualify for the long program this season i have a good feeling about it um, we should, I think, I just want to talk about Julian, uh, Gigi. <gasps> From Malaysia, one of my favorites. Yes. Oh my God. Let me tell you, I was so bummed with how he skated at four continents. <laughs> that was heartbreaking. And I know his potential because his short program at Skate America, 
I was there live. I was like, you are in third, and like you have an entertaining free skate. Um, I, I like seeing him go for the the quad this season. It's great. Yeah, I think his his short, his short run at Skate America blew me away. I was like, I knew who he was, obviously, but I was like, oh, you, 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 you got something. Mm-hmm. You, you've got this. <laughs> Um, so I'm excited. I hope that he. I hope that he has a redemptive skate uh, after Four Continents. I think that um, if he comes and skates clean, um, you know, makes the freeze program, skates well, top fifteen. Yeah. Oh, I think that will be great for him for this year. Um, so, do you remember? Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys watching know this, but Tiffany and I um, met in person at 2016 Worlds in Boston, and we got to see quite a few uh, programs together. Do you remember? He skated the short program, and it was like lights out. And the yes, judges yeah. lowballed him, and we were like, "What the?" And then I was like, really panicky because I liked him even a little before then, and I, he was he barely qualified for the free skate, but it was close. So it's like, "Oh, this skater didn't skate so well." <laughs> but, yeah, so it, it seems like he's slowly getting the PCS marks that he deserves, which, by the way, aren't that high, but they were really low beforehand. Um, I'd love to touch on um, Donovan Carrillo from Mexico. Oh, fan favorite. I saw for the, I, I won't say saw, but like really saw for the first time at Four Continents. Like he Same here. looked so excited to be there, having the best time. Um, I think for him, making the free skate is that's the goal. Um, and he, I think he can. He absolutely can. But I, I love his energy. I love the fact that there's somebody here from Mexico. That is so awesome. Ooh, yeah. And I, I hope that he comes and has a great time and has fun and makes a free skate. That's it. That's what. I, that's all I want for him. Yeah, he's actually really. He's not, I'm not going to say really good skater. He's not a bad skater at all. Like, I enjoy his skating. It's just, you know, tech, he's young, up and coming. I think, um, I like, a lot of, like, skating fans on Twitter were like, someone who's really rich, please sponsor him so he could get the proper training that he needs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe, like, he, I, he, I feel like what he's doing what he can with what he has. Yeah. And if he could go to Brian, if he could go to, um, who else? No, don't go. Don't go to Tomsey. Go to no. Ryan. Corey's got some space in her stable now. Go to Yuka. Go to Yuka and oh, yeah. um, in, in Detroit. Like mm-hmm. I think that he could de- go to Raf. Um, Why not? Those those could be good for him if if he, someone could find a way to do it. But he has a ton of potential. He's got great energy. Um, he was really great at Four Continents. Just you could just tell he just loved being there, and I think that that's really exciting to see. Yeah, I'm at, I'm also really glad to see that he got a lot of attention from the crowd. Yeah, You know, to do all of that traveling and to be a lower level skater it must make a huge difference for him and his confidence. And he does have a social media and it sounds like he appreciates all of it. So that's really great to see. That's so nice. Yeah. And then I want to talk about party pirate, Alexi Bachinka, who has not had the greatest of seasons. Oh yeah, my boyfriend. Oh, was, oh, I forgot he was your Yeah, boyfriend. right. <laughs> he's been laying low this season. <laughs> no, I was just joking. Yeah, he's, he's kind of like hot or cold too. Yeah, he's he's struggled this year, um, but I think he's coming back from injury. He's got all the potential in the world. His I love his programs because they're usually goofy and fun. That's why I call him Party Pirate. Um, I it's nice that Israel has two skaters because it has him and Daniel Samo- Samoan, um, and I hope they both skate well. They both have the opportunity to like have really strong skates and to 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 actually end up you know in a pretty good shape. They're definitely I think there's no reason they're not going to get two seat, two spots next year. Um, and I just want I just want them to skate clean. I'm especially. so glad they have two spots. Like, thank the Lord. <laughs> well, because I remember when he was at where was he at Worlds in 2017, and he had to finish top ten so that they could have two spots for 2018 Olympics, so that he wasn't fighting with Semelin for for the Olympic spots, and yeah. so it was, and he was able to do that as well. So I don't think he I don't think a top ten's in his future for this year because he's not had the greatest of seasons. So um, make make the free skate. Skate well. Yeah, I feel bad for saying this, but he might have peaked about two seasons ago. Oh, probably. Yeah, I mean, but you know, he's still he's still chugging along, which I can respect. I think he's definitely uh, close to uncle territory. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he's 31. He's totally an uncle. Totally team uncle. Team uncle world group. Woo-hoo. Cool. You know what? Um, what I'm most excited about world is skating Twitter. People say the funniest things, and I gotta <laughs> say, this is the funniest, this is what made me laugh the, the most at the Four Continents Twitter, somewhat, because it was during pairs, Let's just, you know, the North Americans were struggling in the free skate. Facts are facts. Um, someone, someone tweeted and said, well, clearly one of the continents is struggling <laughs> out of the four. <laughs> oh. So people are oh, sassy, I, and it is so funny. <laughs> I'm thinking about, 
about going to Worlds in Montreal, so that'll oh, be... Oh, me too. I have only been to Montreal once, so I'm... I, I, hey, Skating Twitter, if you're coming to Montreal, let me know. I want to know. Well, so far, I think it's... Uh, Andrea, for sure, is going from New York. And then if I could get situations sorted out with my dad, which cross your fingers, I, I really want to go. But I won't be able to find out until the fall, but I'm going to try. Let me tell you, I was at Skate Canada International, which was technically in Laval, but I stayed in Montreal. Beautiful city. And I think I walked by the arena that the competition is going to be held at. Prime location, like walking distance to everything. And yeah, I, I would love to see you again in person in Montreal. Yeah, I I haven't I haven't seen I haven't been to a skating competition since U.S. Nationals in 2018, so it's it's time. It's yeah, time. it's time. I, actually, I I love Vegas, so I'm I'm trying to see if I want to do because I'm going to Vegas in June for 10 days to play poker. So I'm like, do I really want to go back in October for Skate America? But I might I might do that. But if not, then Montreal for sure. Mm, absolutely great. Well, Tiffany, this has been so much fun. Thank you for joining me today. Cool. All right. So everyone watching, thank you. Oh, so today's date, March 3rd, Worlds is going to happen way later in the month. So withdrawals can happen. Don't come at me. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.